What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today guys, we're going to be building um, the final Foot Champs squad that we're going to use for gameplay this weekend. Uh, at the time of recording this video, I'm currently 12-4. and 4. I actually went 4-0 and 0 with the non-major 5 league squad. I went 4-0 and 0 with the full Copper Libertadores squad, taking me to 8-0. and 0. I then built this squad... And uh, we went four wins and four losses. And this, for me, is, is easily the best squad that we put together for the weekend. Maybe it's the form. Uh, maybe it's the gameplay. Uh, there's there's only six of the games that you guys get to see here today. The first two losses I took aren't part of uh, the video. I did it on stream. I didn't record them. And um, the game, like they, they were two losses to just you know, hitting the post constantly and so on and so forth. But we're going to talk about the team a little bit more uh, within the game as the gameplay goes on. But first of all, let's build the team. So to start with, uh, we've gone with our trusty Van der Sar again. Now, considering um, after I looked at kind of icon swaps this this kind of season, so to speak, that there wasn't really an icon that I cared about. I was thinking about getting Del Piero. I was thinking about getting Ronaldinho. Considering we ended up getting Van der Sar, Zambrotta and more... I've actually used Van der Sar an incredible amount, so I'm glad we went and picked him up. Uh, but we're going to start with him. Uh, there are some Copper Libertadores cards in here again. It's not the full squad like we had in the last uh, last round. We've got Antonio Valencia back in the squad, and we've got Palenta back in the squad, and we've now played 13 games with him. And I can tell you guys, even though I've only played with him on seven chemistry, he is brilliant. Um, his reactions, ball control and composure are super nice for a centre-back. His passing is brilliant for a centre-back. His pace, of course, is great as well. Uh, and then his defending and physicals are very, very nice too. Uh, so I highly recommend him. And then in at centre-back, next to him, we've got Sol Campbell, um, our pack pulled first own Sol Campbell from yesterday's episode going in there. And then in at left-back, we're going to be using uh, Mina. Now, I had to go and pick him up. I had to go and purchase him. Um, I bought him for like 60-some-odd K. Yeah, I mean, he's still 60K there. What did I actually buy him for? Um... We bought Mina for 58k, so he's actually up a little bit right now, so we made a tiny bit of profit on him. And the reason why we bought him is because we completed and are going to use uh, the Flashback Diaz. So I actually, we've got 11 games on this guy now. I like this card a lot. I actually kept a basic chem style on him. That might have been a mistake. I'm, I'm going to run you through chem styles in a second, my idea behind them and what I liked and didn't like about them. And, and a lot of it comes from me, again, taking on board that comment from now about four episodes ago about what the perceived meta is. And what I'm kind of doing with some of these chem styles that you see and stuff is, is trying not necessarily to go against the grain on purpose, but to try and use and utilize items that you don't usually see and see what kind of a difference it makes. Um, in at the next centre midfield spot, guys, we're going to have flashback Wayne Rooney. Now, when we started using this Wayne Rooney card, he was brilliant. In the last sort of eight games that I've played with him, or four or five games, no, what have we got with this team? Yeah, eight games that I've played with him. I've never hit the post so many times or missed so many shots with a card as I have with this Wayne Rooney. Now, he's still got great return, 20 goals and 12 assists in 24 games. Um, I don't know if it's his work rates, his position, the opponents I'm coming up against, the gameplay, or just me playing bad. Um, but one of those, or a combination of those five things, uh, have kind of deemed this Rooney a lot less valuable than I th first had thought that he was going to be. And then the final centre mid, guys, is going to be Kevin De Bruyne, team of the year. Now, obviously, when we packed him, we used him as a striker and as a cam, and that is where he is absolutely best suited. Um, but for me to get him into the team and not take an attacking position and be able to use uh, other fun players up front... He sadly gets shifted down to the CDM role. You know, he just gets forced down there. Uh, he still performs well as a CDM. Four-star skill moves, five-star weak foot, high, high work rates with real good uh, defensive capabilities. And because he's a secondary CDM, um, he comes in quite nice with some stats. Probably should be good to boost his uh, defensive stats, but I haven't really done it at all. And then in at the right wing spot, guys, we have got Bernardo Silva. Obviously, we're not going to start with a team like this. Bernardo Silva only gives uh, strong links to De Bruyne, so he's only on 8 chem, but Bernardo himself gets 10 chem with the dead eye. Uh, this, this is a card I've had highs and lows with. I, I love him as a central cam. I uh, hate him as an outside cam and don't particularly like him as a striker, but to use De Bruyne, we also have to use uh, Bernardo Silva just because of the good links that he gives. And then in at striker, guys, we've got Borja. And uh, in the left wing spot, we've got Hinestroza. So two of the favorite players that we took um, with the full Copa Libertadores squad back into this team. Borja's losing it. Uh, like, he is just... Maybe it's his work rates. Maybe it's that uh, his dribbling. Although his dribbling should be real good with the stats that I've given him. Uh, you know, with the chemistry that I've given him. 
he's just heavy and lethargic. And what we talked about in yesterday's episode with Hinestroza and Borja not having any traits whatsoever, I think it makes a genuine difference. So this is the starting 11 that we're going to be using for today. Uh, the tactics. Now, I had tactics set up, I thought. I, I might not have done, which might have been why my team was so weird for a few games. Uh, I only just reset into the 4-2-3-1. In one of the games I, that I lost that you'll see today, I, I went into my ultra-defensive and my team just wasn't right. Something was wrong and then I paused it and it showed the 4-3-3. So I double-checked that I was in ultra-defensive and I was. And then at halftime, I was still in 4-3-3. So I was like, okay, obviously something's gone wrong. My tactics haven't saved or I've changed formation or something's gone awry somewhere that's forced uh, a difference. So we switched into drop back and possession. And since we switched into the 4-2-3-1 the with the team set up like this, I got two rage quits in a row, bang, bang. Maybe because my form dropped a little bit more. Maybe because the formation was better. Maybe because my tactics were set up. Uh, but we're in the 4-2-3-1. Uh, Diaz and De Bruyne at CDM. Rooney at central camp. Borja up front. Hinestroza and Bernardo Silva up uh, in the wide cam spots. Um, I like this team a lot. Uh, the reason why I like this team a lot, um, in spite of uh, how I may not have had much enjoyment out of some of the games, as I say, that may have been for a few other reasons. But one of the big reasons why I like this team a lot is because Van der Sar and Campbell were both uh, attainable via icon swaps. And if you guys don't have Van der Sar and Campbell, you definitely have players that you can replace instead of Van der Sar and Campbell right here, right? Um, outside of that, Valencia is relatively cheap at 170k. Polenta is very cheap at 65k. And Mina is about 60k right now. Um, you've then got Diaz, who's about 60k for the SBC. So you get 120k for Diaz and uh, Mina in the team there and Wayne Rooney at like 200 or so K I still think is worth it I don't know if the SBC is there anymore it probably isn't by the time you're watching this if you didn't do the Wayne Rooney SBC you can obviously just use anyone in that center midfield spot that works for you uh, and then instead of team of the year De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva you guys can use anyone in that center mid right wing spot as well I'm sure you guys have got plenty of options there for your teams but this whole squad is mostly about the back four uh, Diaz, Hinestroza, and Borja, because for how cheap this whole setup is, if you just ignore Rooney, De Bruyne, and Bernardo Silva, um, and, and when you take into consideration your goalkeeper and your defender, uh, this whole setup is like really, really cheap, um, and it gives five quality players with issues, with an asterisk. And, and one of those asterisks, is, again, is of course the fact that these players don't have four star skill moves, four star weak foot, or better. It's three, four, or four, three. Um, and that's it. Hinestros are the same. Four-star skill moves, three-star weak foot. They don't have traits. Uh, they don't particularly have the best stamina. Um, 82 stamina for Borja. I think Hinestros' stamina is okay, actually. No, only 82 for him as well. So you will have to sub them out. Um, and then with the defenders, I went with something a bit different, a bit unique. So I went with a backbone on um, Valencia to try and get more out of him as a defensive player. You know, it makes him the best defensive option. Uh, I went with, of course, a Sentinel on Polenta. Now, he already has good base pace, but um, Sentinel on him and then a Guardian on Campbell. I don't know why I gave him that. That's That was silly. I, I must have actually done that by mistake. Uh, I wanted to boost his passing and his defending, not his shooting and his defending. And uh, we also got a Sentinel on Mina. Now, he, again, has got decent base pace, but not the greatest. And what I would say is what I noticed out of these, and the reason why you would have seen in my tactics, I went to drop back rather than pressure on heavy touch, is... When you don't have that pace boost, when you're not getting these players into the high 90s or mid 90s, you know, Campbell with a shadow would be in the, the kind of low to mid 90s. Um, Polenta with a shadow would be in the high 90s. In fact, 99 for one of the categories. Valencia would be in 99 on the categories. And even Diaz on a basic, yes, he gets a plus five sprint speed, but he needs an anchor as well, in my opinion. And I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to spend the coins on this team, uh, you know, spend like 50 or 60,000 coins on chemistry styles. It seemed like a bit of a waste. But in hindsight, it would have been much, much better. I think instead of going four wins, four losses out of this team, if I had the right chem styles and indeed possibly the right chem uh, tactics, I definitely think I would have won at least six, if not seven of the eight games. Um, and so it was a big eye-opener to me for how important pace is on chem styles, especially in the back line, especially if you play aggressive. And so, as I say, I switched to uh, one depth, oh, sorry, three depth drop back um, just so that I stopped getting hit on the counter and caught out. And it made a big difference. Um, but I definitely think having pace on these guys is going to be absolutely paramount. So that, guys, is the squad for today's uh, gameplay. I am going to go ahead and have um, I'm going to go and have one of the league SBC set of packs before we get into the actual gameplay. Probably, um, probably the Turkish league or the Liga Nos 
or maybe both. I might I might build both of them um, and, and put them both together for, for this. So uh, for now, guys, I will be right back. All right, guys, as we get into the gameplay, um, enjoy the games and the gameplay, I suppose. Um, we've got some comments from yesterday's video. Most of all of the comments were about pack luck, red list, luck in general, and just a few misconceptions. Now, I have talked about this to death, right? Um, but the comment I'm going to take to start with is from Jake Driver. He says, mad how since he made that video saying he will never have enough coins to make a super team, he's gone on to pack some insane stuff. EA always listening. You are right. I have packed some insane stuff over the last week or so. I packed Killian Mbappe, Robert Perez, Prime Soul Campbell as well. Um, and then in tomorrow's video, we hit one of the big uh, Copper Libertadores cards. Um, and people see that and they just immediately get jealous or envious, right? They just immediately like, oh my God, EA farming this guy packs and rewards and such on and so forth. I understand where your perspective comes what you need to understand is that I start. I had just a week and a half ago about forty thousand coins shy of ten million coins. I now have about six point four million coins, and if I sold all the players that I packed that were of value, and all the players that I've bought for squad builders, I would probably have about eight point two to eight point four million coins. So I'm actually down almost one and a half to one point seven million coins. Even with those big pack pulls, so tell me where the red list is. I you like if I didn't pack those cards, I would be down probably like three and a half or three million coins or two and a half million coins. But you can't like if I was on a, a red list, if I was on some kind of EA governed pack list where it just gives me the best things all the time, I wouldn't be losing coins. I would be doing nothing other than making coins. I would open a pack and I'd make some coins. I open a pack and I'd make some coins. That's just not what happens. Um, I sat there and opened probably about 10 to 15 ultimate packs, uh, which did you see in this video or yesterday's video? I can't remember when. And then I opened the uh, the two for one ultimate packs as well, and I got nothing out of them. I got a couple of walkouts here and there, a few other little bit, bits and bobs here and there, but generally speaking, I didn't get anything out of them. So if I was on a red list, where was, where was my big players there? What I think people don't understand, and, and something that I do want to put together either for the back end of this week or the start of next week, is showing a whole... Not a whole day of me opening packs, but showing you guys every pack I open. Well, not showing it because nobody cares about bronze packs. But maybe from, maybe do you know what? From today, from literally from this moment of recording this video. Now, there's some already in tomorrow's video that I can't account for. Uh, I'll let you know in whatever video that it's in, either tomorrow or the day after when I start. But I'm going to start writing down on a spreadsheet every single pack that i open for a week right and we'll see how many packs it is and what kind of pack types they were and then you can then judge that and and compare that against how many packs you open and what type of packs you open and then you will start to see that hey the reason why he's hitting big cards is because he's opening loads and loads of packs now i am in a very luxurious position where um we get depravka there as well by the way guys from my first player pick not bad not great not bad um, I'm in a luxurious position where I can afford to put more time into this game than most people, right? And I don't even put crazy amounts of time in, to be fair, um, but I can put more time in than most people. So, you know, it, it, even just yesterday, I mean, I mean, from today onwards, actually, this is going to be great for, for an example for you guys. I'm going to be doing the whole Serie A, the whole Premier League, the whole Bundesliga, the whole Chinese League. And the whole championship all in the next like day or two. So that alone is going to come in at about 100 packs. Let alone the bronze packs and the silver packs that I open in the meantime. Uh, any gold packs that I do from gold pack method. Any packs that I get from any other SBCs. Reward packs that come on Thursday. Any objective packs that I pick up along the way. And then any Copa Libertadores and Copa Sudamericana uh, League SBC packs that we open as well. In the next two to three days, I'm probably going to open somewhere between 400 and 500 packs. I am bound to hit something out of those packs. It's just the law of averages, right? Do I have little stints where I get a little bit more lucky? Sure. You know, this last few days, we've hit some nice big cards. But also in this last few days, I've wasted more coins on packs than I ever have done before. Do I regret it? Not particularly, because I'm, I'm enjoying myself on the account. You know, I've got enough coins. My teams are good enough. I've got enough coins to just enjoy myself. Um, so I don't particularly regret it per se. 
Um, but I, I don't. I, I think people think that I have more than what I have. As I say, I started with almost 10 million coins before this Copa Libertadores promo started. I'm now down at nearly 6 million coins. And if I sold everything, I'd have barely over 8 million coins. So I'm down almost 2 million coins from opening packs. That's not a red list. And in terms of luck, right? So let's say, let's put it into a perspective. If if I throw a dart at the bullseye and I hit the bullseye on the first time, maybe that's skill, right? Look, I'm trying to think of like something that's entirely luck-based. But if I, if, I, if I close my eyes and you know those uh, theme ground uh, kind of like games that you can play where you've got to throw a hoop on, right? If I just close my eyes and throw a hoop and it lands on the bottle, that's extremely lucky. If I throw 10 hoops, close my eyes, throw 10 hoops and hit all 10 of them, that's ex you would then start to think that that is manipulated because even if your eyes are open on those games, they are designed to make you lose. So even if your eyes are open, you throw a hoop, like, chances are it just pings off the bottle, bounces off, you're never going to get the, the prize, right? So if I close my eyes and throw one hoop, you'd be like, oh, that was really lucky. If I close my eyes and throw 10 hoops and hit every single one and land it every single time on a bottle, you'd then sit there and think, wow, this this theme, theme park or this uh, fairground or whatever is manipulating this guy to win to make other patrons try and engage in their product so that they get more money. I can see that. So I can see what you guys see. If, however, I sat there and closed my eyes and threw a thousand hoops and one of them landed. And as that one lands, that's the one that you see akin to you seeing the pack that I opened that's got a good player in it. Is that them manipulating it? Or is that just the law of averages? You know, if I, if I open 500 packs in two or three days and I hit one or two walkouts, are you all of a sudden now going to be like, oh, yeah, no, he actually does have normal pack luck <clears throat> because his account isn't manipulated or are you still going to be like oh my god two walkouts in 500 packs fixed rigged red list of course you're not because this is this illogical there's just no critical thinking there at all um and so there you go but bottom line is is my pack luck is the same as your pack luck it is luck i just enhance my chances at getting lucky because i open incredibly more packs than you do generally speaking the next two comments uh, first one is from tortoise too slow he says when is sbc to glory coming back and noah chase says for those wondering league sbc is not this profitable hardly ever he's hit a card from every one of the last promos and two icons in a past month well the icons didn't come from the league sbc grind uh they came from opening 100 and 125k packs from the two for one store so that has nothing to do with league sbc um and so League SBC to Glory is not coming back because I feel like, again, I've proven that it works, right? I took an account with 10,000 coins. It's currently got like 35,000 coins on it. We completed a League SBC entirely. We have over 1,000 players in the club. I I've shown how it works, why it works, and that you can do it from scratch. Nothing else going on, right? Um, what I feel like, so that that's the, to answer the one question. What I feel like with regards to Noah and a lot of people that have thumbed up Noah's comments and, and don't believe in the League SBC system, is that they're not willing to put in the time through the boring crap, right? Opening bronze packs is deadly boring. Opening silver packs is incredibly boring. Selling off the items for 200 coins or 300 coins, it's just not enjoyable. It's just unbelievably unenjoyable. And I do it because of content, right? I do it because I create content from it. I, get, I obviously generate a real life revenue from it and uh, it, it allows me to do other things in a game without actually spending money. But to say that it's not this profitable hardly ever is, again, either because you have a small sample size to, to prove that. Like if you've just gone and done like a couple teams from the Chinese league, a couple teams from the Saudi league, got a mixed players pack from the Premier League, opened those and have gone like, well, didn't hit a walk out of those. This doesn't work. And yeah, it doesn't work. That's not how it works. You've got to engage in it. And it's been proven from myself, from Nick, from Frog, from the amount of viewers that tweet me constantly, still doing the League SBC grind, bang, just done this, just done that. It's proven to have worked. So if you don't believe in it, I'm happy with that. Um, but if you if, if you do believe in it, you've got to put, like, I, I do understand that a lot of my viewers are, are younger. You know, some of them, are, some of you guys are like 13 or 12 or 11. You, <laughs> this game isn't that serious for you guys. 
you know, make being, being the most efficient you can ever be in a game that's, you know, maybe you get an hour or, or so a night on if your parents let you or, you know, maybe you got to sit there and play with your brother or whatever and your brother doesn't want to sit there opening bronze packs with you. Instead, he just wants to get into a game and, and play some football. I, I get why you would A, think it doesn't work or B, not really get engaged in it or interested in it. But for those of you that are have more time or have a genuine interest in efficient grinding and getting the most out of your account for time, not money, League SBC system and Bronze Pack Method and Silver Pack Method are 100% effective all the time without fail. Um, the next comment is from Jordan Anderson. He says, how come earlier in the video, while on stream, you said that the League SBCs are not worth it if you don't have any of the players for the leagues? But later, opening the packs, you reeled off some League SBCs saying they weren't bad, even if you do them from scratch. You, I feel like you've answered your question in your question. Uh, the League SBCs are not worth it if you have none of the players. But that doesn't mean that they're terrible. There's, you know, some of them are not bad. They're not necessarily worth it. They're just not bad. Like, for example... If you start from scratch and you, say, put 110k into the Chinese League SBC and you get 80k back almost as like a guaranteed bare minimum, that's not bad. You're 30k down with the chance of hitting some big stuff. Maybe you hit a big silver or a big special card. Maybe you hit an icon or maybe you just hit some of these uh, Sudamericana cards to, to do the SBC. It's not bad. Not to say it's good and it's not to say it's worth it. It's it's just to say it's not bad. So what, what I think uh, in that context... I think it's more about um, letting people know, like, if you have a hundred thousand coins right now, which one of them is like that? The, one of them is like eighty thousand coins or something like that. Uh, let me go into a fuck bin real quick. Um, have a look at the player SBCs. Um, so you've got uh, so Eredivisie is a hundred k on PlayStation. That's not bad. It's not, again, it's not necessarily worth it. Um, so Saudi League is ninety eight thousand coins from scratch on PlayStation. Right, and what you get back, jumbo premium silver pack, small prime mixed players pack, premium silver players pack, small rare silver players pack, yada yada yada, you will probably make, as a bare minimum, if you just sold every single item, you would probably make somewhere close to like fifty to sixty thousand coins back. That, in my opinion, is not bad. It's not worth it. It's just not bad. It's one of those things where it's like. If you wanted to, if, uh, first of all, you could snipe those players a bit cheaper. Maybe you get it a bit cheaper. Maybe, again, if you hit a good player, if you hit a lucky silver, you could easily make a lot of coins back. But the reason why I would go from saying, if you're starting from scratch, it's not worth it, that would be more, like, that more would be the case for the really, really expensive ones, like like the Liga Nos coming in mad expensive. That's just 100% not worth it. But why, why I would say sometimes it's not bad is because what you would do from spending 100,000 coins, let's say you spend exactly 100,000 coins on the Saudi League, you, you then take all the players that you get from the Saudi League and it starts building your club stock, right? It starts putting players and items into your club. You sell all the consumables, badges, kits that sell, and then you've got a bank of players now which you can do multiple things with. The off-league silvers you can put into gold upgrade packs. The, um, the on-league silvers you now can either sell to generate more coins back or you could... Uh, use in the SBCs to save money somewhere else down the line and go again. Uh, it just depends on where you're at in your account, what you have and, and where you want to go. Um, so this game here, guys, was the game that took me to 18 wins. We finished 18 and 5 uh, in Foot Champs this weekend, which is nice. This red player pick definitely got me back playing. Um, but that, guys, is going to be the end of the gameplay. We're now going to get our red player pick. So I will be right back. So now we get our 18 win player pick. There's going to be no face cam for this either because I'm still sat here in the dark. My cameras are off and all sorts because I just wanted to sit and focus. I'll tell you something. We came in 12 and 4. We have got to 18 and 5 in really quick time. That wasn't bad at all. Maybe I should play <laughs> this late on Sunday night a lot more. Um, but I'm happy with 18 wins. I'll take the gold two rewards for Thursday. Uh, I, 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 I could get to 24. I probably wouldn't. I don't want to. I don't want to even try and play it. Um, but hit oh play online two we've done as well. That's really important. That is, I needed that experience, um, and that leaves us with player days for win eighteen. We get a player pick pack, a guaranteed eight seven plus overall one of three. 
Come on, EA. Hey, that's alright, right? Is that alright? Is that good? I don't even know if that's good. Is that a win or not? How much is Salah selling for? That's a big dub? Oh, really? Yeah, he's like a 700 coin player. That is nice. Four-star skill moves, three-star weak foot. He, for our Premier League first owner squad, he, come, he comes in real nice. So there you go. And do you know what? This, this is what I'm saying to EA. This extra player pick, guaranteed minimum 87 rated overall, is what got me back playing champs to 18 wins. Otherwise, I would have stopped at 11 wins again. Or maybe even not. Maybe would have even done less than 11 wins. Um, I'm really happy with this card. Uh, with a with a dead eye, he's a 95 cam. With a maestro, he's a 96 cam. With a sniper, he's a 94 cam. And he has amazing stats with a sniper. He's got 89 stam as well. Yeah, that, that's a really, really nice card. I like that card a lot. That, that That's a dub. That is a dub. That's a nice one, man. So happy days.